You know, I never asked Wolf if he plays Wolf. He does, of he course, does. bro. What? That's like the first time like someone who's like named close to a character actually plays Close, it's the same name. It's literally dude. the same. <laughs> literally the same. You know what else is the same? The this Dennis matchup? Like, yeah. Every Wednesday night here at Xeno <laughs> by House of 3000. It's the Palu Ditto. Something we are very accustomed to seeing if you tune into this stream. We have now, the best Palus. But what should we be looking forward to with this? With this, uh, lots of nares. We're going to be seeing lots of nares. We might not be looking forward to it, but we definitely will be seeing <laughs> it in our future. Uh, and the ledge trapping. Uh, when you see the pilot dittos, the game is usually won and lost at the ledge right here. Because uh, they will keep each other there for minutes at a time. It's kind of crazy. Now, Ray dipped into losers from the uh, winner side of top eight. Was really disgruntled about it. He did not look too happy with his loss to uh, Mystery. Do you think any of that fire is going to catch with him early on in his fight against Jake to stay alive in this tournament? Uh, I don't think Ray really carries over his previous sets into the next one. He always has like those deep losers runs at, you know, these bigger events. And when he drops a set, like he lost that Myron at Pound and still kind of ran through losers a little bit. Yeah. So I think we see a lot of that. So I don't think he carries sets over. And they're both playing really good right now. And even though Frozen is a 50% higher, it's pretty much dead even how this works out. Yeah, you know, given percentages, I feel like taking too heavy of a lead in the Palu Ditto doesn't matter as much. Because, like, yeah, she should be able to kill a target at 112 the same as she can kill someone at 182. Yeah, it pretty much just uh, makes her range a little bit bigger, like back throw, stress kill, and center stage and stuff. But right now, it's way more important who's in advantage right now, and it's really big. Oh, never mind. <laughs> One bad F tilt. It goes right away. And now this is where it gets tough in the Palu Ditto a lot of the times. A lot of Palu players... Once you spawn down, it's still kind of like doable. You can make this comeback. But if the other Palu gets like one really good Nair chain or a really good downer, like that's to even it right up. Why did he drop so far down? You wanted some deep edge guard, but you know what? Palu is at 20, like five. Yeah. Palu wouldn't even die to something like that. Like Nair, like what does that do? Hey, either way, we're looking at more of a dead even match. Though I feel like Ray is doing a better job of forcing the battles to the ledge than Frozen is, but Frozen in turn is having a better time with his reversals. Yeah, um, most of the time the game's gonna be sent retreating from Palu, one of those is gonna push forward in there. And then it really comes down to um, who gets that first grab to get them all stage or first hit. It's such a weird tug of war, cause like, I feel like Palutena responds to her own tools really well so when it comes well, to something. Yeah. That's why it's so hard to make comebacks. Ooh, almost with the hard read on that. He's a monster. Really close. But every time a Nair hits, it's scary, cause it's always way more than a Nair. Yeah, it's never just the single hit. It's not like with other characters where you go with the trade for trade. It's like, it's the follow-up that Palu gets that you have to be Yeah, careful. she gets put in such an advantageous position, if not outright taking your stock. That's great. Okay, thank you, Devin. Um, we're coming back here. We got Ray once again stuck at the ledge. And same as last time, it doesn't really matter what the percents are, as long as they can come back. And look at that. Okay. It didn't matter. Just 110, get that roll read. Right back in it. Now the question is how long is Frozen going to hold the lead? Because, like, sitting at 135, like we established, dangerous, but, like, he's, yeah. the stock's already gone. You might as well make as much of it as you can. Mm -hmm. As long as this, well, Dash Tech might start killing now. Get a little stale there, so the next one might be able to take it. Air Dodge read, really nice to find that now. That's clean. Okay. Yeah. Just as, a, just as a side note, do you see either of these guys switching off Palu at all during this Never. set? Okay, no. cool. Uh, I think Frozen has like... No, I don't think he would go Olimar. I don't see Ray playing Olimar. Um, Ray's Olimar kind of all right. Yeah, but his Palu, I think, is far and beyond better. I would agree. Yeah. But uh, we got Ray holding the ledge right there, but a really errant dash attack going to cost him. The stage control, oh my god, the reads from everyone are way too much right now. I've been noticing a lot of Palus tonight have been trying to go for a lot more smash reads. Is this just like... I, I feel like Palutena's like, character meta doesn't advance that far from what we naturally see here in New York. So like, is this just like a player read thing? I think it's such a big part of this matchup is taking the lead. And if you get like a down smash read and you kill them at 60, you, you put yourself so far ahead that it makes the comeback almost impossible. All right. So, just by taking stocks, you know, the early lead tends to win, it looks like. But this game has been dead even the whole time. Wow, that upper kills. Okay. That was strong. 
If I remember correctly, at least from like looking at its values from Smash 4, the up air is like much better with Rage. I, I feel like a lot of that may have carried over into uh, Ultimate. Like it scales really well with it's Rage. It's really strong up air anyway. It, it is a yeah. good up air regardless. Like double jump read and you're close to the top of the screen, you could die like 60 to that. So I think even without Rage, nah, he would have if if Ray was at zero. Rage does still play a part in this game. 1.1 1 .1 multiplier, kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's not the biggest, but like it makes a difference. Yeah, those it's little noticeable. those little things. Plus, like Paulo is not the kind of character that can really abuse it. Ah, uh, she kinda can. Pretty much every good character abuses the all the mechanics of the game given to them. That what makes them so good, you know. Wolf is the same way. Uh, Alomar the same way. Snake. They just function well in the engine of the game. Yeah, they they they're good working characters. Bringing us into game two, though, and I feel like it's just a little bit more momentum behind uh, fr uh, Frozen, which, odd being as he's down the game, but considering how back and forth game one was, I don't think it's that surprising. Yeah, game one was really neck and neck. That was anyone's game going into it. Ray actually kind of cheeked it out a little bit last game, so yeah. Frozen seems like he was carrying a lot of momentum in the last stock. Let's see if it continues on here. Almost again with the up airs. I feel like it's a really good tool in this particular matchup because Palutena, once she like gets her game going, she's spending a lot of time in the air. So like yeah, obviously you want to try Pala to likes to it. jump. Her, her grounded normals and neutral are kind of weak. What does she really, you know, she could use like, dash attack is good, but da it's not. Dash attack is like the only good one. Like forward tilt, she is incredibly laggy. Yeah, Down that was on the back of the shield though, so it was safe. Yeah. Palu can't really do anything. Yeah, Palu struggles again. Oh, oh, no! He gets footstooled. A little unfortunate, but <laughs> is what it is, right? That was definitely not intentional. No, it was. that was definitely a, a double jump there back to stage. You could tell very clearly. Okay, full punch on the dash attack. It's just a whole lot of this. And, like, yeah, it's, it's curious to me because, like, there's still a lot on the line for both of these players. Like, this is tournament life in loser's bracket but at the same time they can't really force the situation too heavily like, there does such a good job of applying pressure palu is really bad at dealing with cross upside of shield karate shield options just aren't that good at covering it so like it's and really, is so good at crossing up look at that pressure there's really nothing palu can do it's really just the race they're just doing the same moves <laughs> stop it guys hit each other gosh this is a deadly game as simon says at this point like Okay, he got like a third jump, <laughs> almost it seems like. Almost dash back right into the explosive flame. It always feels bad when you get hit by the random explosive flame, just like throw it out in neutral. Nah, yeah, it's... You feel so robbed. It really does just steal all of your momentum away. Yeah. Cause, like, Look it, at that, all the moves. Because it's, you, it's, you, oh it's bad God. enough that like he read where you were going to go, mm -hmm. but like you're in the explosion for a while before it kills yeah, you. Yeah, it really sets, sets in. You know, you're like, yeah, I'm definitely dead. Ray with this patented up throw into doing nothing because it's terrible. He's going to take 17 for it. I never it, understand that. It would make sense if he played, like, more of a juggle game, but Holler doesn't really have a vertical juggle it game. It doesn't. No, she, it's okay. She can call out, like, people with weaker landings, but Palu's landing is so insane. Especially with Frozen on its stage with platforms. Yeah. Teleport cancels to get down. Like, I don't know. I don't see it. Plus, like, both of these players are really good at making good decisions in high-pressure situations. So, like, it's not like you're going to try to catch someone on bad DI or, like, making a poor decision on where to go on the stage. Yeah, I think it's rare for them to make, like, very silly mistakes at disadvantage like that. They, they both know what they're doing pretty well. They, they know where their character excels at. Apply pretty well. A okay. dash attack's terrible on shield, yeah. Yeah, if you don't cross up with it, Palu really just gotta hold it. And uh, the ledge, the percent game almost doesn't matter. It's so important who has the other person at the ledge, because that's where pretty much every single sock we've seen this entire second taken, yeah. it happens there. It, it's actually crazy how many exchanges with Palu 
are just her at the ledge, and they're fighting to just tick the other person off. That's yeah, because it it's like when they're on stage, they're getting these little trades that deal tiny bits of damage to them, which is whatever. And like they're striking on shield a lot on each other. Yeah, but that's not really it. mattering as much because it's just a matter of who's getting the better positioning afterwards. Yeah, so like if you cross up with Nair, but you put yourself into the corner to get the cross up to make it safe, it's like, was it worth was it? Was that really worth it right there in how this, this matchup has been playing out? I love how these monkeys right out the gate just go for short hop Nair. What like, else are you gonna do? <laughs> Ooh, short hop. Ooh, double jump fair, that's way too much of a mix for Palus, dude. That's way too out there. Yeah, we see Frozen moving away from the Nair as he hits yet another Nair. And Ray might have like only used Nair this game. <laughs> I am not. It's like. Okay, there's an up air, but that might have been the only move he had used so far. Like, we're not even goofing on them for it. It's just, it, that's how streamlined the character is. And, like, especially... In this matchup especially, I think. When you have better out of shield options, Palu has to be a little bit more respectful of their Nair. But Palu just cannot punish Palu out of shield. No, yeah, Palu's had to find herself, like, firmly within the Tri-State meta. Great catch with the down. Oh, no, the, oh, he did have his double jump. He's going to get the yeah, two frame on the teleport. Whole stock on that. Back air, I'm out of there. Palutena is firmly within our meta because she can do so much with so little. Like, you know that it's going to be a lot of Nair and a lot of forward air for pressing them outwards on the stage. Back air and dash attack are your safer options. Down tilt and up air are your, like, your catches. And, like, you narrow down the character's game plan so far that there's only so much you could do with that those tools. And mind you, they do a great job. They, there's they, a lot they, you could do with them. They yeah. all work to great effect. It's just like when you put it against a character that can navigate around those tools decently, now all of a sudden you've narrowed down the character's kit even further. So like it might look silly that they're just doing there, but like really what else are they going to do besides go for some sort of heavy read? I like that movement in neutral. I'm using your movement to call out the other person's nair. That's what pretty much this all is, is calling out your opponent's nair. Yes. Game of nairs, something like that. It's, it's like you can't even like call out the, the shield with like grabbing. Like, it's you not, can. Like, but you're not gonna get as much off it. We, we've seen that Ray already doesn't oh, get as much Oh, it's the win off. box instead of the actual hit box, and it's gonna cost him his stock. That is a pretty big shift, actually. It puts Ray in, I think, in a doable position as long as he doesn't eat the read right there, which he will. So right back to the struggles for Ray. And they don't stop coming. But like, I feel like it's just the matter of the back and forth. Like we brought this up earlier on with game one, how that was pretty tight in. And I think it's gonna be the same case throughout the set. That's what it looks like. This looks like it's getting a little bit too far gone how to make her come back. Um, you get to the point where two or three more nares or just neutral wins in general, and suddenly you're dying at backer at the ledge or to F smash That'll on the do with it, counter. Counter is such a risky option. Because, like, if, if Palazzo is not trying to cross you up, she's trying to just, like, just be outside of your spacing so that she can turn around. Yeah, she wants you to whiff and then punish. Yeah. So, like, the counter just leaving you there, and Frozen, who, he was definitely on the up and up for game three. Def like, he just straight up took that situation. That was a really good back air feint, though. But Frozen, he really tricked him into thinking that it was coming because I think both stocks he took that game were from back air. A lot of his stocks have been uh, from back air at the ledge, so I, think I so. do not blame Ray for being scared, but good on Frozen for recognizing that and just punishing him. Back to PS2. I like it. I love sets like this. Yeah, it's it's really not a matter of the stage that's going to do anything for them, and I feel like Palutena performs fantastically on PS2. There's no reason why that she would want to change. Yeah. And I think to, to Ray's credit, he wouldn't want to give a different platform layout because he knows how comfortable Frozen is with both camp yeah, yeah. With camping around the triplats, maneuvering with ledge cancels on the triplats. Like, he doesn't want to have to deal with that extra nonsense. That pressure was so good. The flame pretty much almost true shield pressured into the nair because it was so close up. Yeah, that's one thing I you have to respect about Frozen's Palutena above most, that his positioning of explosive flame is so good. And we see hints of it from the other uh, NY Palus, but like, Frozen's the one who really is able to make that move look like you could just put it wherever. Yeah, it's really good at calling out like a hard approach. You put it there and you just kind of kill all their momentum and force them to kind of fade back, look for another opening. And then it just kills sometimes. It's it. Emotional advantage right there, just kind of like that up smash. Yo, really quick. Killing whatever, like, hello. I mean, we see Palu getting off to, didn't quite get the full conversion that, uh... It was cute, though. Got. Yeah. It would have been a nice combo if it actually did something, but... 
And I think it's a big deal for Pal to get that like first like 46, kind of like that. That's usually what she does. Like, it's so hard to make this comeback. I mean, I've been saying it a little bit too much this set, but that's just kind of how the Pal Luda works. No, yeah, it's, it's a really good point to bring up over and over because like as the set moves away from being back and forth, it's really a matter of how much can the opposing Palu pick up the slack. And a lot of this has been how well can Ray pick up the slack as Frozen sort of runs away with the game. We saw it in game three, especially towards the last stop. And we're seeing it right in the beginning of game four, and it's just a rough scene for Ray. Yeah, Ray definitely likes to bleed his opponents out too. He will get just chip you away, chip away with Nair, 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 and he has no problem killing you 160 at the ledge with it. Problem is, is that that patient game doesn't really work out when you're sitting at this heavy of a deficit. Yeah, especially when Frozen is making such good callouts on a lot of your mistakes. When you even it up right there, Ray, some hope. It's some still hope. there. He's just gotta, he's gotta do something with this stock before he loses it. Maybe yeah. not a lot, but he's gotta do something. If he gets his quick like starter damage, like 46, I think it's in a lot better position. But this could be it. No, barely living. Yeah, the falls up the jump. Ah, the ledge has been so strong. And Ray pretty much is always jumping. Because he's always looking for Nair. So yeah. It's a pretty safe read. And like like you mentioned earlier, like her ground options aren't that great. So you already know from the get-go that Palutena is going to want to jump. Yeah, she's either taking your dash attack burst option or, or jumping. There's almost nothing else she can do. Maybe dash grab. But her dash grab is kind of weak, especially compared to her standing grab, which yeah. is kind of crazy. Kind of works for Frozen. Oh, okay. well, didn't work for Ray. Kind of coming in for a clutch there. <laughs> oh, I was about to. I was thinking about the smash read in my head too. Yo. I expected a counter because Frozen hit it. There's and that was like the move. back end of the hitbox too. It, it stretches like a little bit like on top of. Bad DI on the back air. Okay, teleports from above. I'm pretty sure it doesn't get the two frame. I never realized how weird of an angle that down air sends at the ground. Yeah, it's not the spike hitbox has a really weird, it's like a weird 45 degree behind you. You can actually combo explosive flame into that, you can combo into nothing and just hit feral stage. Clean that up really quick as Frozen moves on. It loses there. Yep. For now, we get a break from the pilot today. Oh, 